Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Powers of X, number three. And we're going to get to the bottom of uh, some of the mysteries that have been confusing me about this title. By the way, is it Powers of X or Powers of Ten? Some people are saying it's Powers of Ten because of the mathematical stuff uh, that uh, Hickman is doing in here. But I maintain that it is Powers of X, as in you insert the power of ten in there, like sort of like algebra. Anyway, could we get any more nerdy? Let's find out. Hey, welcome back. And hey, we are bringing up the nerd levels. We're in the timeline control center where we look at all the different permutations of the lives of Moira X. You know, let's dive straight into the million dollar comics cam because why the heck wouldn't we? Powers of X number three, hot on the heels of Powers of X number two that came out last week where we got to see a lot of things happening. We saw some really, uh, like a sort of a heist, a caper that they knew was a suicide mission uh, to, to discover, basically to track down when did Nimrod get created? When did Nimrod, the uh, artificially intelligent ultra sentinel thingy, um, come online and, and, and become... Uh, first become a threat so they uh a team of mutants went in and uh found the indexing chip that would let them know not when it happened but at least give them an idea of where to find the data of when it happened in this issue they go in to find the data and uh we get to see a lot of really cool stuff we get some re finally some clarity on who these guys are who's green magneto and who's the plant dude well it turns out, thanks to another one of these cool infographics, um, we understand now that these are the last surviving uh, mutants of Earth. So um, if we take a look, Apocalypse in this timeline is the leader of the X-Men, and his four horsemen include Wolverine, the original real Wolverine that we know, Zorn from our universe, who, whoever that ends up being, um, and then uh, two chimeric uh, mutants, uh, rather one chimeric mutant called Pestilence, who's a combination of, it says here, Dane and Frost, which I take to mean Lorna Dane, Polaris, and uh, Emma Frost, the White Queen, right? Put those powers together and you get like a psychic magneto, uh, maybe with invulnerability. That's pretty cool. And then uh, last but not least is Famine. The character that I speculated was probably Doug Ramsey. Indeed is Doug Ramsey. Uh, or at least the essence of Doug Ramsey's powers merged with the island of Krakoa. Um, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we, we, we've also got um, sort of look into these other uh, chimeric mutants and, and, and the other sort of weird future versions that, you know, I maintained were a, a little bit like confusing and convoluted and like, it's too much already, too much too soon. But they finally reveal here, they really uh, uh, decided that, um, how to fix that problem, I think. I think that was what's on uh, Hickman's mind because as we read the book, as we discussed in the last issue, and as I discussed previously, my theory was that um, this, uh, what we were seeing in the year 100 in the Powers of X book is mo was most likely um, Life 9, Moira's uh, ninth life, previous to the life that's in the universe that we see now in um, House of X, and that turned out to be correct. So before, previously when we saw this timeline, um, things were broken off right around uh, when the Apocalypse War begins. So now we get to see in this timeline, um, let's can we zoom in even more, yeah. Let's take a, a good look here. So after the Apocalypse War began, uh, and Avengers World defeated, that was alluded to, so basically like all the other superheroes of the world were defeated. Um, and Nimrod comes online at, year f at Moira's 50th year okay now presumably that time is going to be the same across all the timelines right because Nimrod is is seen as inevitable the rise of the artificially intelligent sentinels um, 
So presumably, that's where we are now. And indeed, that's what has been discovered. If you're reading House of X, and why would you read Powers of X without reading House of X, uh, you'll know that they have discovered in outer space the Mother Mold facility, and they believe is the dawning of Nimrod. Do they believe it, or do they know it? That's what this issue revealed. So if we keep going on the ninth timeline, and you can go through and see all these things, how the chimeric mutants were bred by Mr. Sinister, uh, how these black brain hounds were created, uh, an, another kind of riff on the whole Days of Future Past hounds, but with a kind of Hickman twist. You know, all the different generations and types of chimeras and stuff. Like I said, it was so complicated that um, I, I felt like it, it wasn't destined to become a long-term part of X-Men continuity, and, and indeed it doesn't. Here we see the fall of Krakoa. We don't really know what that means. The collapse of Mars and asteroid K being established. I believe in that timeline they had said the mutants had all left Earth. Um, and then they, there's an exodus from, from, from there to Shi'ar space. Okay, this is where Moira and Apocalypse formulate the plan to eliminate, eliminate Nimrod. Okay. Um, and this is what we see in in powers of uh, powers of x number three right basically their plan was they needed to find out when and where nimrod happened because they realized at this point that it was already too late nothing that she's been able to do in her eight previous lives has been able to stop this inevitable rise of the sort of man mutant artificial or man machine artificial intelligence um alliance meant to destroy mutants so in 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 this issue we get to see um them discover the origin of of uh nimrod in a sort of uh um suicide mission and f that information is given to moira who we find out at the end of this issue is is has been kept in stasis that info is given to her and she's immediately spoiler alert killed by wolverine now it all makes perfect sense. She lived this entire life and this entire timeline ultimately to get that piece of information in order to be able to use it in her next life. And that's where we are now, back in life 10 in the current House of X timeline. And maybe, just maybe, that's what uh, this whole wraparound thing that I alluded to in my previous timeline analysis means. So she lived life nine and died. And here's life 10 now with an overarching knowledge of all of those lives. Now the same is true of life eight in here. It also flows over the top. So I'm not sure how that ties in. Maybe we'll find out. And of course there's still the mystery of life number six. What happened there? Why is it totally removed from the timeline and, and what's going on? There's also sort of a lingering question in my mind about Life 10. If, if Life 10 is the Marvel Universe X-Men that we've known the whole time, okay, and that early in, in, in the first year of the X-Men being founded, if, if that info, all the info of the previous nine lives is available to both Xavier and Magneto, then they would know kind of all, the, many if not all of the things that were going to happen to them in this timeline. Like assuming a lot of the same things happen besides the Sentinel stuff. Like, I don't know, many X-Men adventures and many of the Brotherhood's attempts and failures and what have you. Does that mean that they did all of that stuff um, it's sort of like knowing that it was happening? I don't really believe that. I can't believe that, especially the way Hickman alluded to the fact that, you know, if you know what's happening in your life, it's not going to unfold the same way. And there is really no evidence to say that Xavier or Magneto knew what was happening when all those things are happening and knew all of this stuff. I mean, there's answers to that, right? This is the X-Men. We're talking about psychics and mind blocks and things. So potentially Xavier could have mind blocked himself even and Magneto to let this timeline, certain events in this timeline run its course, or maybe it was all just a plan from the very beginning and it's being played out um, in a sort of a weird kind of convoluted way. Either way, um, 
It's pretty cool. It's pretty exciting, right? This is some interesting X-Men stuff for the first time uh, in a really long time. So if we if we think about what's happening now, the um, we're here now in 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 um, the tenth timeline in House of X, and Nimrod is coming online. But for the first time, we know about that, and that is the sort of su the the sort of super secret mission that they sent Cyclops on um, in the previous issue. Right, so where where he was all a badass and um, ready to go into outer space, could that be a suicide mission as well? Could the whole tenth timeline ultimately be another suicide mission, just meant to set up uh, events for an all new, fresh X Men timeline? That seems kind of likely. That's what J.K. thinks in the comments in my last video. He mentioned that uh, he really thought this was just going to be a way Moira will die and that will restart the X-Men. I think that's a little... That's definitely a possibility, but I think it's not the most... Uh, I, I think it's so likely almost that, that, that Hickman wouldn't go in that direction. So um, my theory is at the moment, is that Moira will somehow be stripped of her power and die so that we know definitively we are in the last and final timeline. Because if you keep her around and she's always an out to reboot everything in the X-Men universe, essentially, then um, I don't know how long that works or how interesting that is as a story. I think it's a little more interesting to either kill her now and then kill her early in her next life before her mutant powers develop so we know that is the definitive timeline. I think if it happens, it's going to have to happen somehow like that because we just can't have this go on and on forever. Um, either that or, as I said, lose her powers now somehow and die and then we just continue on in the continuity in the universe that we've known all along. But uh, it, it didn't work. It, it didn't happen the way, kind of the way we thought it was going to happen. I think that's a pretty cool concept because, you know, retconning. I, I hate retconning for the sake of retconning where they just throw away old stories. All of the best retconning and retroactive continuity happened by guys like uh, Alan Moore who took the old stories and did not say those did not happen. No, indeed, they did happen. But what was happening was not what you thought was happening and that there was a whole other layer on top of that that you never knew. That's how you do a great retcon in comics in my opinion, these days where you have, it's so explicit that we have these universes and multiple universes and we can end them and restart them. Um, it's almost too easy of an out to just let your stories go in any direction in any um, crazy continuity direction that you want. Um, so uh, am I rambling? Maybe a little bit, but this stuff matters to me. And if you like comics the way I do, then it probably matters to you. So listen up. Thank you so much for uh, subscribing if you subscribe and, and watching this video and hitting like if you liked it and sharing it with your friends because it's because of you we're creeping up on 300 subscribers and we're going to have a big celebration when we get there. So, hey, thank you for supporting the channel in every way that you do. And we'll see you next time.